Today I want to share with you a master recipe for how to make a medicinal herbal tincture. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, today I'm continuing my series on medicinal herbs and I want to share with you how to make medicinal herbal tinctures. First, I want to explain what a master recipe is and what a medicinal herbal tincture is. But if you open the description underneath this video, I'll have timestamps where I walk you through the steps for making a medicinal herbal tincture. So if you already know what a master recipe is and a medicinal herbal tincture, you can jump ahead. When I use the terminology master recipe, what I'm referring to is something that you would call a template. And basically what this template is, is a recipe to follow that has basic steps and basic ingredients. However, there's one area of the recipe that allows you some flexibility. But as long as you have the basic steps, you know how to make the particular recipe. And in this case, it's a recipe for how to make a medicinal herbal tincture. So the basic recipe for making a medicinal herbal tincture involves using some type of liquid, which you have choices on that liquid, which we'll discuss in a minute. But the area where you have some variety is what herbs you decide to use to make your tincture. Now, speaking of the herbs, what is a medicinal herbal tincture? A medicinal herbal tincture is basically a concentrated extract of herbs and it's a liquid concentrated extract of herbs and the nice thing about medicinal herbal tinctures is that they're easy to make they're easy to take and they have a very long shelf life and the reason that you would want to make a tincture and have it on hand is to help you treat a particular condition that the specific herbs would help now, for example, today, just for demonstration purposes, using this master recipe, we're going to make a tincture that helps with headaches. But you can make all kinds of tinctures. Just follow the master recipe, but change up the herbs for the particular condition that you want to treat. You can make tinctures for aches and pains. You can make tinctures that can help you sleep. There's a whole host of tinctures that you can make. And I highly recommend if you're new to medicinal herbs to go to your library and look at what types of books they may have on herbs and start educating yourself about the various healing and medicinal properties that certain herbs have. And a wonderful author who's a very experienced herbalist that you may want to look for is a woman named Rosemary Gladstar. She's been an herbalist, I think, going back to the 1970s, and you can't go wrong with any of her books. And if you're new to herbs, I highly recommend her book, Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. This book is outstanding. She talks about how to know your herbs, how to recognize them, how to grow them, and how to use them. So this is a very popular book, and many of you have told me you've seen this at your library. I highly recommend this. And the nice thing about looking at books at your library is you can determine which ones that you eventually may like to add to your own home library. Now, how do you take a medicinal herbal tincture? It's very easy to take, and you don't need a lot because it's very concentrated. What you're gonna be taking is about a dropper full of, or two. And don't worry if you don't have a bottle like this. You're basically gonna be looking at maybe taking an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon. And I'll have all of this information in the printable recipe so that you'll know exactly how much you should be taking. And when it comes to actually taking it, you can put it right into your mouth and take it straight like that, or you can dilute it in water. You can also put it in tea or juice, anything like that that you want. 
And if you're interested in knowing about the medicinal herbs that I like to grow, as well as what their medicinal and healing properties are, I have a number of videos on this, and I'll be sure to link to it in the iCards or link to them in the iCards and in the description below. And if I ever run out of iCards, you can always be assured I'll have everything in the description under the video. And also in the description below, I'll have a link to the recipe, which will take you over to my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, where you can read it online or print it out. It'll have the master recipe, as well as the headache tincture I'm gonna to share today. And while you're over at my website, if you want, you can also sign up for my newsletter, which is chock full of things about traditional cooking, the prepper pantry, herbs, all wonderful information that I think you'll find very useful. And you'll also be able to download my free 36 page pantry list, which can be very helpful, especially if you're making the transition from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen, and you're wondering what you should be stocking in your pantry. Now I just want to mention, as I've shared with you in other videos whenever I talk about medicinal herbs, that if you're pregnant, if you're nursing, if you're thinking of using these remedies with children, or if you're taking medication either over the counter or prescription, or if you have allergies, especially hay fever, you really want to check with your doctor or your pediatrician or any other type of healthcare professional that you work with to make sure that the herbs that you're planning on using are appropriate. Now I wanted to mention if you're interested in buying herb seeds or even dried herbs if you don't grow your own, Mountain Rose Herbs is a wonderful resource and the folks there have been so kind to give me a 15% off discount coupon code for my viewers. So be sure to check the description below because it does expire in June and you don't want to miss out. And keep in mind this is not a sponsored post. I've been a very devoted customer of theirs for years because I've been so pleased with their products. Alrighty, now let's get ready to make our master recipe for our medicinal herbal tinctures. Now the first thing that you're going to need is some type of jar. I've just got an eight ounce canning jar here, just a jelly jar. I like to make my tinctures in small amounts. Now granted, yes, they have a wonderful shelf life, but I like to have a variety of tinctures for different ailments, and I find that starting with an eight ounce jar works well for me. But you can double this amount, triple, quadruple. You can make whatever amount of tincture is appropriate for your household. Next, you're gonna need some type of liquid. Now today, I'm gonna to use alcohol, but if you don't wanna use alcohol, that's fine. You have options. You can also use glycerin, or you can even use apple cider vinegar, preferably raw apple cider vinegar. And yes, you can use your own homemade apple cider vinegar. And if that's something that you'd like to learn how to make, I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below, where I have a three-part series that walks you through the whole 30-day process for making your own raw apple cider vinegar. Now, what I've got here is an 80-proof vodka. And I know different countries label their alcohol differently, but an 80-proof vodka is 40% alcohol. And the reason that I'm using vodka, and this is just a mid-priced vodka, I don't buy the least expensive because we are gonna be ingesting it, but I also don't buy the most expensive. And I'm really not an expert on it, I don't drink, I just use alcohol for making various herbal preparations, and I've simply decided that I felt a mid-priced vodka would be the best. And the reason I choose vodka is because it's generally what herbalists recommend. Alcohol is very good at extracting all of the medicinal properties from herbs. And they recommend vodka specifically because it's clear in color and it's flavorless. So it doesn't affect the taste or the color of the herbs that you're using. And in addition to using vodka, I've also seen recipes where herbalists recommend using an alcohol that's called Everclear. And I believe that's 100% proof, uh, which would be 50% alcohol. Now, when it comes to the herbs, you can use flowers, you can use leaves, you can use the roots, you can use the bark or the stem, and you can also use the berries. You can also use dried herbs like we're going to use today, but you can also use fresh herbs. The only difference is how much you're going to put in your jar. And leaves and flowers are treated a little differently than roots, stalks, and or the bark. 
and the berries. So first we'll talk about what we do with the leaves and the flowers. If you're using fresh leaves and flowers, you want to give them a real good chopping. Chopping up the leaves and flowers helps begin to release some of the essential or volatile oils, making the whole process easier. And if you are using fresh leaves and flowers, you're going to fill your jar three quarters of the way full. In our case, with this example, since we're going to be using dried leaves and flowers, which are all chopped up, we're going to fill our jar either halfway or you can even go two thirds if you want. If you find that you're going to be using a lot of flowers, which are less compact, say, than leaves, you can fill your jar two-thirds of the way. But when you use leaves, which are very chopped up and very compact, say you're just doing leaves, then halfway up your jar is sufficient. And the reason why with dried herbs that you're only going to go halfway up or maximum two-thirds if you find you basically have a lot of flowers is because when you pour your liquid onto them, they're going to really expand. And when they expand though, you still want there to be room in the jar so that you, when you shake it, there can be some movement. Now, when it comes to using roots, bark, stem, berries, you want to really chop these up very well. Or if you have an ability to grind them, maybe you have a little spice grinder that can handle it, or one of those kind of high-speed blenders, the more that you can chop all of this up, the better. Because these things tend to be a little tougher, and by chopping them up or grinding them up, you can really help the process of releasing those volatile or essential oils. Now, when it comes to filling your jar with the ground up roots and bark stems and berries, you're only gonna go about a third or a maximum halfway up your jar. Now today, for our example in making this tincture for helping to relieve headaches, I'm gonna be using some feverfew, some chamomile, and some peppermint. And what I'm going to do is fill my jar, you know, somewhere between halfway to two thirds full. And I'm going to more or less just do an even amount of each. And I'm just going to go between each jar, just taking about a tablespoon at a time until I reach the amount that I want to have in this jar. Well, this is a good amount that I've gotten here. So now we'll proceed with the next step. But what I want to mention is that when you're putting your tincture together, when you're putting the herbs into your jar, you may be following a recipe for a particular tincture. As I mentioned earlier, there are sleep tinctures and aches and pains tinctures. There's all sorts of tinctures out there that you can make. But if you find that for your particular situation, you want to use more or less of a particular herb, you can always do that. There's plenty of flexibility. And for example, with this headache tincture, you may say, wow, equal parts of peppermint along with the chamomile flowers and the feverfew might be strong tasting for me you can go less on the peppermint. I like peppermint very much, and it is a strong herb. It's stronger tasting than the feverfew and definitely stronger tasting than the chamomile. But it's something that I like and that I find very helpful and very soothing when I have a headache. So that's why I'm doing equal parts. But if you ever read a recipe uh, uh, for a particular tincture that you wanna make and you think, wow, that's a, a strong herb, I wanna use a little less you can always do that. This is the benefit of reading and learning about herbs and also trying them over time. You begin to find what agrees with you the best and what helps with your particular condition the best. And then you're gonna find you're gonna start making your own recipes and your own mixtures to treat whatever conditions that you want to treat. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is take whatever liquid you're using, the procedure is the same whether you're using the vodka or the glycerin or the apple cider vinegar. And you're just going to fill your jar to make sure that all of the herbs are completely covered and saturated. Now, you're going to see that yes, they're going to float to the top, but don't worry about that. They will eventually settle down. So once you fill the jar with your liquid, just put a lid on this and I'm just gonna give it a little good shake 
just to make sure that everything is saturated and you will find over the next day or two all of the herbs will have sunk down to the bottom and they will have also have absorbed some of the liquid that you're using so that can be a good time to check to see if you need to top it off top off your jar with any additional liquid because you do want to make sure that it's pretty much filled to the top or you know at least to the a little it can be a little below the rim because you want to have room to be able to shake it but you do want to make sure that you have plenty of liquid in here that can work to extract all of the essential oils or volatile oils from the herbs now what you're going to want to do is put this in a warm place and basically allow it to steep from four to six weeks Four weeks is gen generally sufficient when you're using flowers and leaves, and six weeks is better if you've, if you've used bark or stems or the roots or the berries. Speaking of a warm place, does it need to be a dark warm place or a sunny warm place? Herbalists sometimes have different opinions on this. Rosemary Gladstar says that it's fine to keep it in a warm sunny place. Now, if you're wondering, well, would the sun potentially damage the essential or volatile oils and potentially make everything rancid? And I think that's a great question. I've often wondered about that too. But herbalists say that the alcohol, in essence, acts as a preservative to prevent that from happening. But really, it's your choice. If you feel more comfortable putting it in a warm, dark place, by all means, you can do that. Now after the first or second day when the herbs have settled and you've possibly topped it off with more liquid if it needed it, do you need to shake this every day? I don't necessarily think you have to shake it every single day, but I do think it is good to periodically check on it just to make sure that all of the herbs are saturated under the liquid. So generally what I'll do is periodically I'll look at it and I'll remember and I'll just give it a little shake like that and then put it back upright. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. I'll put that away and let that steep for four weeks. But what do you do after the four to six weeks? Well, I've got one right here and we're going to get ready to strain it and decant it. I've got a measuring cup here, but use whatever kind of vessel you have. And then you're just going to need a mesh strainer. I don't line the mesh strainer with anything because I feel it would absorb some of the tincture. But what I recommend is that when you begin to drain this out or to strain it out, don't press on the herbs because you want your tincture to be as clear as possible and not have any little bits in it. So let's go ahead now and strain our tincture. You may just have to help it out a little as I'm doing here because you will find that the herbs will become very compact. <laughs> now what you're going to want to do is just leave this undisturbed and let your tincture drip down into the vessel that you're using. Don't press on the herbs. You, as I said, you don't want to get all those little bits and pieces coming through your strainer, through your mesh strainer, but just let it drip down and it'll eventually drain out from all of the herbs and flowers. Once it stops dripping, then you can move on to decanting your tincture. And if you're wondering what to do with your herbs, Rosemary Gladstar often recommends putting these into the compost pile if you're comfortable with that. Now, when it comes to decanting and storing your tincture, if you have dark glass bottles, all the better. But don't worry, if all you have is a clear glass bottle, that's fine too, because we're going to be storing this in a dark, cool place. And when I say a dark, cool place, I'm thinking along the lines of maybe the working pantry in your kitchen or a cabinet in your kitchen that's not over your cooktop. But you don't want to necessarily store this in your bathroom where you may have heat associated with your shower. To extend its life, really a cool, dark pantry or cabinet is best. Now, if you've had a chance to see my video where I talk to you about the kitchen treasures, so to speak, that I like to find from the garbage, these are many bottles that have been rescued from recycling bins. So if you have friends and neighbors who tend to throw this type of stuff out, you may want to let them know that you might like to recycle them, in essence, in your own home by giving them a new purpose. Because I think as traditional home cooks, as well as those of us who like to make home remedies, we know that often what other people consider trash, we consider treasures. And when it comes to finding treasures for the traditional foods kitchen, as well as the kitchen garden, I'll be sure to link to those videos uh, where I talk about all the things that I like to look for from the garbage. 
Now generally what I like to do is if I do have an eyedropper bottle like this, this is a very small little one, but I might put some tincture in here. Uh, I might just put it in a jar and then use a little eyedropper to transfer it to something like this, you know, for just keeping very handy. It really depends. There's no exact science as to how you want to decant this. And the good news is, if you've made your medicinal herbal tincture using alcohol, this has a very long shelf life. This is going to stay fresh and in essence very potent for years and years and years. If you've used glycerin, your medicinal herbal tincture will stay fresh and potent for about two to three years. And if you've used raw apple cider vinegar to make your medicinal herbal tincture, it'll probably stay fresh and potent for about one year. Now for today, I'm gonna to go ahead and decant this particular headache medicinal herbal tincture into this bottle since I have a nice amount of this. Now, if you would like to learn more master recipes for making other type of medicinal herb remedies, including how to make medicinal herbal teas, medicinal herbal oils, and medicinal herbal salves, be sure to check on this video over here where I have a complete playlist all about medicinal herbal remedies. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.